Um, so this is the Mediterranean diet. I'm excited to give this talk. It is a super healthy diet, to put it in simple terms. Um, so what I'm gonna talk about this evening is um, a little bit of Mediterranean diet history, just because as I'm putting a presentation together, I like to try to find out some information um, that I don't know. So um, I've got a little bit of history in here, and then I'm gonna summarize health benefits, um, talk about how the Mediterranean diet has been voted the best overall diet uh, for the last three years, and then how you might transition to a Mediterranean diet. And then um, I'm gonna give you a great resource for recipes and meal plans, and um, just maybe some guidance for how to think about um, adding a meal here and there that is uh, Mediterranean, if, if it's not really your thing or the flavors that you enjoy. Because I think as you start to expose yourself to it more and more, um, you learn to like and enjoy those flavors. I have found that personally for myself. So I wanted to start out by just showing you the pyramid. And the basis of the Mediterranean diet period pyramid is really um, just the activity and the enjoyment and being with family and loved ones. So it really is about a lifestyle. So that's why I like to make really clear to everyone. And then as you start to go up the pyramid, you notice that whole large section there with fruits and vegetables and grains is all plant-based food. So that is the majority of the types of foods that you would be enjoying in the Mediterranean diet. And then as you continue to move up the pyramid, you would start with eating more fish and seafood. I know I have a lot of people that wanna transition or bec become more Mediterranean in their eating, and they don't like fish and seafood. So um, I'll give you a couple tips there as well as we go through this. And then um, moderate portions of poultry, eggs, cheese, um, yogurts, those type of things during the week. And then also um, less often would be your red meats and your sweets. So um, those would be the, the main foods. And then I'll, always drinking lots of water and red wine in moderation is also part of the Mediterranean diet. I am trying to scroll down here. There we go. So um, the Mediterranean diet, just a little bit of history on it, it really grew out of what they call the Mediterranean basin. And so I tried to circle that here um, as we're looking at this map here, what areas that actually would cover. And it's a very large portion, a very large area. And as you think of, you know, the world uh, a couple thousand years ago, this was um, a large area to travel. But um, definitely there's influence from the Egyptian um, area, Jerusalem, um, up through the Roman Empire. And the Roman Empire really encompassed a huge, huge area. They went all the way up into Germany, as you guys probably know, and France and that area um, in the you know, 200 time frame. Um, then Greek, obviously right kind of smack dab in the middle of that Mediterranean basin. Um, and then there was religious traditions also. So Jewish and Christian traditions really played into this. Uh, the Germanic tribes, which traveled throughout this area. Um, and if you know, even today, the German people are the biggest meat eaters. So they were really um, the big hunter, hunter gatherers um, that contributed to the Mediterranean diet. And then Crete, the Isle of Crete, which is right kind of in the center of that area, just off of the boot of Greece there. Sorry, working on the slide changing here. I'm not sure why it's not changing for me.
There we go. Um, and I wanted to also mention this just because, um, again, history, um, the basis of the Mediterranean diet was really formed off of these three types of food. And these foods were part of the Roman Christian tradition, and they were carried throughout the area by the monastic orders. So if you think grapes and wine, you know, the blood of Christ, olives, the anointing, anointing of the sick, anointing of the feet, and then grains, so the body or the bread of Christ as well. So very tied into Christian tradition. And then other influences on the Mediterranean diet were again the Germanic tribes. They were the big hunters, farmers, gatherers, um, again contributing that meat portion to the diet. And then the Arabs, the Muslims, they contributed the sugar cane and rice and spinach, eggplant, um, citrus spices, Rose water, um, that's a really interesting flavor. Um, I've been looking into some recipes um, for different foods that contain rose water in them. And almonds and pomegranates, uh, couscous was also part of that tradition. And then you think about, um, you know, the Mediterranean diet being around for thousands of years, but in truth, um, part of the influence comes from the discovery of the Americas. So, um, the t potatoes and tomatoes and corn and uh, some of the beans and peppers, those all came over from um, the Americas in, you know, the 16th century around then. So, you know, when you think of uh, tomato sauce and pasta sauce and marinara, a lot of that didn't really originate until about that time, but became, um, you know, huge components, especially of the that Italian flair of the Mediterranean diet. And I wanted to also mention the role of grains. And we know this, you know, throughout history, you might even think of it, as, you know, about your grandparents or great grandparents. Um, grains have always been, you know, a dollar stretcher. They've always been readily available in some form or another. So they're, they stretch the dollar, they stretch those meals, they're filling. And um, of course, that's true with the Mediterranean diet as well. So I just listed some of the common grains you might find um, in the Mediterranean diet. And if you talk to someone from, you know, Greek or Lebanon, they can tell you the different sizes of the boulder wheat. I don't know um, what sizes they use um, for different um, meals that they make or different dishes that they make, but they do have different cuts and sizes of the wheat. Um, farro, which is, you know, an ancient grain as well. Couscous, which is a very small pasta, uh, polenta, which is more like the cornmeal, and then bread, of course. And, um, you know, I, I think grains get a bad rap these days, but I think we can fit them into part of our diet. And I like to say, let's eat more of the whole, whole grain. So we're not grinding the grain down to flour and then recreating it into something, you know, like bread or donuts or that type of thing, but we're eating more, you know, boulder wheat or oatmeal, um, you know, uh, different grains that are going to be more filling and are actually also going to take longer for our body to digest. So they're not going to shoot our blood sugar up like, um, you know, donuts or even bread. And then also, you know, really looking and focusing on eating those whole grains if you are having bread. So staying away from um, the white breads that have had all the, um, you know, the protein and the healthy fats removed. And the Mediterranean diet is also, you know, just steeped in tradition. So, you know, just the whole aspect of eating, um, you know, from maybe the fishermen going out, maybe a, a group, and I don't say this in a to be, uh, you know, like non-traditional, but more of the men going out and being the hunter-gatherers or the fisher, fishermen, and then the women traditionally were more, um, you know, many generations might be working together in the kitchen, um, you know, processing and preparing and cooking, and, and then everyone, of course, consuming the food. So everyone was part of, you know, getting that food to the table, and, you know, roles have changed today. So, um, Definitely we see um, everyone also trying to get food to the table. 
Um, so the development of the Mediterranean diet, actually, um, it wasn't started to be studied until the 1950s. So an American physiologist, Ansel Keys, he actually was noticing how that people living in the poorer areas of Southern Italy had lower risk of heart disease than people living in the wealthier areas of New York. And so he began to think that this was probably attributed to their diet. So I'm just gonna go through some of the health benefits. And when I give you the, um, the website here at the end of the presentation, it's gonna have um, a lot of these studies and just tons of great information out on it that you can you know, read through on your own if you're really interested in learning more about the Mediterranean diet and all these studies. And I can tell you right now, the Mediterranean diet is the most studied diet out there. And that's why we know, um, you know how healthy it is for you. Um, but so just going through some of these, it does help reduce the risk of heart disease. Um, they found that um, eating a Mediterranean diet was, um, it would cause 30% um, reduced rate in heart disease over a control group or a regular um, diet group. And this was from um, the PREDIMED studies. And a lot of these, um, the information I'm providing here are, are from the PREDIMED studies. That was a very large study um, done on heart disease. And it was discredited for a while because what happened with the PREDIMED studies is they actually, um, when they were forming the control ver groups um, versus the other groups, they were um, actually putting families together, uh, family members together in the same group so that they could eat the same foods. And that's not the way that you're supposed to, you know, form a good um, randomized trial study. So um, there was some, um, you know, just pushback on the, the results of the study, but then the people that um, did the study actually took all of those um, cases out and they did come up with, you know, the same results actually within, you know, that were statistically significant. So um, they did, I did want to mention that in case any of you are familiar with the PREDIMED studies. Um, so they have, um, come back and said that those results were accurate after they threw out um, the groups that weren't controlled as well. Um, so also it may reduce women's risk for stroke and they found that women considered high risk. Um, it was reduced by 20%. That was also the PREDIMED studies. Uh, may prevent cognitive decline and Alzheimer's disease. Um, this was in, uh, published in a review, um, The Frontiers in Nutrition. And um, I also want to just mention there is another diet called the MIND diet, and it is actually a combination of the Mediterranean and the DASH diet, which is, the DASH is kind of the Americanized um, Mediterranean diet. And um, that's one of the, the diets that they recommend for, um, you know, cognitive decline. But from the studies I've read, actually, the Mediterranean diet has actually had slightly better results um, with reducing and improving, um, you know, cognitive, improving cognitive decline. So you can't go wrong with a, a good Mediterranean diet. Um, it may help with weight loss and maintenance, although that's not the main goal of a Mediterranean diet. The Mediterranean diet is um, to help you improve your health and heart conditions and um, inflammation in the body. And so if you're not calorie restricting and just eating Mediterranean type foods, you probably see some slow weight loss, but you can um, restrict calories, go on a Mediterranean diet with restricted calories. And they found that that's very effective for weight loss. And I just want to put a plug in here if anyone's interested and they want to meet with me, um, I do have Mediterranean diet plans at different calorie levels. So if you wanted to try Mediterranean diet, I could determine and help you determine the calorie level and then actually get you um, a meal plan at that calorie level. So it may also stave off and manage type two diabetes. Um, they found that people following a Mediterranean diet had a 
lower risk of developing type 2 diabetes, and that was followed up for four years with that PREDIMED study. Um, they also help with rheumatoid arthritis symptoms. So again, um, very anti-inflammatory for the body, can help with some of um, those types of symptoms and possibly with other autoimmune uh, disease as well as maybe a first um, step or a first diet approach. Can be protective against some types of cancer. So they found reduced incidence of breast cancer and colorectal cancer. Um, they also found that women who ate a Mediterranean diet supplemented with extra virgin olive oil had a 62% lower risk of breast cancer than those in the control group that ate a low fat diet. So they really have kind of got away um, from recommending low fat diets to people. It's more about looking at healthy fat diets and the Mediterranean diet is um, full of those healthy fats. They've also found that it may be protective against depression. And you know, depression again is in that realm of neurological disorders and it's also um, an inflammatory disease is what they're finding. So um, helping to reduce that inflammation may help with um, protect, be protective against depression as well. So this is uh, that ranking from, it's from US News and World Report. Every year they come out with uh, top diets. What they do is they have um, nutrition experts, doctors, um, university professors that in nutrition from all over the country rank um, different diets and they come up with um, different criteria that they rank them on. And so for the third year in a row, the Mediterranean diet has been ranked the number one overall diet. That DASH diet that I mentioned, the Americanized, I call it the Americanized um, Mediterranean, it's dietary approaches to stop hypertension. It's also a low sodium diet, um, but that's ranked number two. And that tied with the flexitarian diet. And um, these diets have all been shown to help with um, cognitive decline and Alzheimer's. So they're being used in that way. The flexitarian is, um, lower meat diet, so no more than about four ounces a day of meat, and we know a lot of people eat a lot more than that. And the other main thing that you've noticed about all of these diets is they are just full of fruits and vegetables and even some whole grains, so lots of plant-based foods. And just to show you um, kind of how that Mediterranean diet stacked up, it was number one best diets overall voted this year, uh, number one in best plant-based diets, also number one in best diabetes diets, number one in best diets for healthy eating, and number one in easiest diets to follow. So I don't really have to say much more about it here um, just to sell it to you. I think it's really um, shows, speaks for itself here. It was voted number two in best heart healthy diets. The Ornish diet was voted number one, and that is actually a lower fat diet. So it's kind of interesting there, um, but it's, that one is very hard to sustain. I would tell you that right off the bat, and that's probably why it doesn't rank higher, um, because I think only 10% of your calories come from fat in the Ornish diet. And then um, it was ranked number 15 in best weight loss diets. Weight Watchers was ranked number one. And again, they did have that caveat, if you do calorie control the Mediterranean diet, um, that really makes it a very effective weight loss diet as well. And then it was ranked number 27 in best fat weight loss, fast weight loss diets. I can't say that fast. <laughs> um, but the HMR program was ranked number one, and that's actually one of those pre-made meal programs that you would get through you know, a doctor's office or clinic um, for very fast weight loss, and you'd be monitored by you know, a doctor or dietitian, something like that as well. So again, the um, Mediterranean diet isn't for fast weight loss. It's, again, that lifestyle and lots of healthy foods in that diet. So I just wanted to show that pyramid one more time. Um, you know, just again, that basis is that lifestyle. So um, enjoying time with your family, your loved ones, being active every day, 
Um, you know, and they're not saying go out and run five miles or kill yourself exercising, but just making sure that you remain active and involved in life. And then again, all the plant-based foods, um, fish twice a week, and then you're moving up to the poultry, the eggs, the cheese, the yogurts, and milk products. So a little less often for those, and then meats and sweets, um, seldom, and then wine, of course, in moderation. Red wine can be drank, and water would be the other main drink that you would have. Um, here's another sheet, and again, this will be on that website, and um, I did mention also I'm going to send you guys a cheat sheet that will have that website on it. If you don't remember it after this evening, you'll have that. But this just kind of lists a lot of the foods. And when, you know, when I first started looking at this, um, I grew up eating a more traditional German type diet. Um, so a lot of these foods were a little bit more, I want to say bitter and savory than the types of food I, food I grew up on. But I have found that I really um, enjoy a lot of these foods now. Um, olives was not something I grew up eating. I love to eat olives now. Um, yogurt, I didn't grow up eating yogurt, but eat a lot of that now. And, you know, a lot of these vegetables, um, fruits, um, fish, seafood, um, and even spices kind of intermingle with other um, food traditions. So you probably pretty f familiar with a lot of these. So here is um, some of the tips for transitioning to a Mediterranean diet. So, you know, if you're not sure it's for you, um, you know, you might just start thinking about making some small changes. If you wanna, you know, just kind of grab the bull by the horns and just go for it, um, you can certainly get out on this website I'm gonna show you. Um, and start looking up recipes and figuring out how you want to start incorporating it. And particularly if you like these savory kind of foods and um, you know the cheeses and the olives, those type of foods, this might be a really great uh, diet for you. Um, but first of all, you want to start by just trying to transition and get more vegetables onto your plate, sneaking them into your diet. Um, so trying to figure out, um, you know, even at breakfast, sometimes you know, you don't have to think about breakfast as always being, you know, cereal or a donut or a bar, something that you grab quick. Um, sometimes I'll get a boiled egg, have a boiled egg, and maybe a little bit of salmon with that. And I might even throw in some asparagus or vegetables from the evening before and have that for my breakfast. So just think about, you know, thinking outside the, the box a little bit. Um, you can also get those vegetables into, you know, soups and stews and casseroles, that type of thing. Um, and then start changing the way you think about meat. And I know in um, the U.S. typically meat is like a big portion of the meal, especially if you go out to dinner. Um, but start thinking it as a smaller portion um, and that your vegetables, even some of your whole grains could be a little bit larger uh, pie, piece of the pie on the plate. And then, um, you know, so diminishing um, how that meat, it, takes up the whole plate and just having it as part of that plate. Enjoying some dairy products. Um, there are, I know some people that are very sensitive to dairy. Um, some of them can do well still with yogurt or cheeses, hard cheeses in particular. But if you are one of those um, people, you might try, um, you know, if you haven't tried milk for a while, you might try the lactose-free products or the A2 milks that are out there. Um, some people are having success with those uh, versus the traditional milk. Um, eat seafood twice a week. So if you can start to bring in a couple recipes that you like, you know, maybe you're not eating any seafood at all right now. Maybe you'd like to just try some of those little tuna packets. Um, they have different flavors of those now, and usually those are, you know, very low in calories and um, you know, very tasty, can open up a packet for lunch with some vegetables um, and you know, maybe a piece of fruit as well. But um, there's a lot of great recipes out there for um, making tuna steaks or making salmon fillets. And those are two of my favorite fish, just because they don't tend to smell up my house <laughs> when I'm cooking them. Um, and um, 
very delicious. I love making salmon. Um, I might mix together a little balsamic vinegar, some mustard and some honey, and then glaze my salmon with that. And then put maybe some salt, pepper, and maybe even a little bit of, um, you know, uh, Italian seasoning or herbs to province, something like that over top of that. And um, that caramelizes really beautifully and makes it just a delicious salmon dish. And I like to take my extra salmon the next day and throw it over a salad greens and maybe sprinkle in some walnuts or, um, you know, different, uh, even some fruit, like maybe some dried craisins or something like that, um, just for that flavor. And maybe a little cheese. Um, so yeah, you can really stretch um, if you make the, the salmon or even the tuna steaks to really, really delicious and not that fishy tasting that some people are, are really offended by. Um, you might try cooking a vegetarian meal one night a week. Um, there's a lot of great lentil recipes out there or bean recipes. You can stretch your dollar. Um, they call that um, Meatless Monday. There's a whole website out there uh, with recipes for people that are trying to do um, more of a plant-based diet and trying to enjoy uh, that type of meal once a week. And again, those type of meals really stretch your, your dollar. I made um, a red lentil soup last week and you know we had it for uh, dinner one night and then we ate it for lunch several days <laughs> during the week. So, um, you know, just great for that. Um, using the healthy fats. So um, just trying to incorporate those into your daily meal. And that PREDIMED study did use, um, one of the control groups did use extra virgin olive oil, um, having a couple tablespoons of that a day. And it, one of the other control groups used nuts. And so they combined a lot of those when they gave the results, but um, both of them were very effective um, at increasing that um, the healthy fat into the diet. But you can also, again, get in those olives and those avocados, um, and different seeds and nuts as well. Switching to whole grains, you know, so if you're still doing a lot of um, white flour type foods, then you can certainly switch to those whole grain pastas, um, the whole grain bread if you're using that. Um, and then again, trying to get in some of those whole whole grains. So um, the oatmeal or the steel cut oat or the um, bulgur wheat or the farro. Um, I made this week um, a teff porridge, which teff is actually a traditional African um, grain. And that one, that turned out really good. It had cinnamon. Um, I think I had some orange flavoring in there. And it, that one was one that I cooked uh, beforehand and divvied up into bowls and that we were able to eat during the week. So um, the main things that they have for fruit or for dessert are <laughs> fruit and uh, dates, figs, um, nuts, so you might see a kind of a platter with these types of foods on. And then they tend to serve more of their um, savory, um, sweet dishes for special occasions. So, you know, baklava, we've probably all heard of that. Um, those would be more for those special treat um, kind of time, days or times. So those could be some ways you could transition. My screen is stuck again. Let's see if it'll go. I think if I stay on a page too long, it's telling me that it's just going to stay there. Let's see if I can page up. There we go. Um, so just some pictures here. Um, I, I pulled these off the website. I'm going to show you um, just recipes for desserts and some of what they might consider some traditional desserts. Um, baked brie with a fig spread, um, a chocolate mousse with extra virgin olive oil, and then uh, just a fruit bowl with avocado sliced into it as well. And then um, the avocado summer wrap, um, maple candy walnuts, uh, quinoa tabule. Um, those are some of other traditional foods that you can have. 
me see if I can get to the site here from, great. Uh, did that switch for you guys? Can you see the site okay? I, I do not see it. You don't see the old way site? No. Anyone, out, anyone see it? Okay, let me, let me go out and see if I can pull it back up here. It may be the way you're sharing. If it's in a different screen, do you have two screens? Yes. You might need to drag it over. Okay, let's see if I can figure out how to do that. There's screen sharing. Here we go. Any luck there? Nope. No. Oh, okay. Let's try this again. New share. Let's go. There we okay. go. Okay. Super. All right. Third time's a charm. All right. So. Um, this is oldwavespt.org, and it's a traditional food website. Some of you might have seen it before, but um, this is probably my favorite res resource for finding um, Mediterranean-type foods and diets. Um, but just so you know, there's recipes, there's resources, there's all the health studies. And if you go to traditional diets, um, they'll show some different ones here. I generally go to Mediterranean diet, if I'm looking at this, and then um, I'll just scroll down, but you can see all the, a lot of different resources. Um, if you want to buy the Mediterranean diet plan book, I think it's like $15, um, but there are a lot of other great resources out here that you wouldn't actually need to buy that unless you're really, really serious about, you know, doing this and having something in front of you. Um, but just lots of great resources. You can join um, and get an email newsletter from them. The diet pyramid I showed you is on here. There's a welcome to the Mediterranean diet brochure. Um, the eight steps, those are just those transition steps that I showed you, but those are all out here. I think I put some of this stuff onto your um, cheat sheet I'm going to provide for you as well. Um, the health benefits and then just tons of stuff. So if you keep scrolling down, you know, 12 ways to use olives, 12 ways to use feta cheese, um, just a lot of uh, different handouts and resources that you can download and print out on your own if you wish. Um, and as you can see, tons and tons of pages there. Um, but what I wanted to do is go to the recipes. And um, this is kind of how I use this one. So there's a search over here on the left-hand side of the screen. And um, basically you'd start by going Mediterranean diet. And then um, I had someone this morning ask me about, you know, what some breakfast food ideas would be. And so I'm just gonna click on breakfast here. And then you do have to go down to the bottom and do your search. And, um, you know, voila, here you get lots of recipes or ideas for breakfast type foods. And I think I mentioned eggs aren't like an everyday food on the Mediterranean diet, um, but they are used certainly. But they do have some savory type dishes here. Amaranth is a grain. Um, they have apple cinnamon oatmeal. If someone sees a recipe they want me to open up, you can yell out at me. I won't do a ton of them, but I do a few of them if anyone has something that they really want to see. Um, you know, caprese egg muffins, if you've ever had the caprese salad with the um, basil and the fresh tomatoes, and um, th th that's just, you know, so delicious. So that could be something, mo the mozzarella cheese, the fresh mozzarella cheese on there. Um, so that could be a great uh, make ahead type thing. Um, what about the breakfast salad? The breakfast salad, I think. 
Yeah, I think there's, it looks like some pancetta or prosciutto or something on there. But yeah, so you, as you can see, just really great. They've got this laid out so nice. Bread. You know, so um, this has bread, olive oil, eggs, um, vinegar, mixed lettuce, avocado, prosciutto, um, and salt and pepper. So I think the nice thing about the Mediterranean diet is they're not afraid to use fruits and vegetables and oils and cheeses, you know, so it's, it comes down to that amount. But those foods can just be very satisfying in your diet, you know, so just trying to get incorporate some of those in there. Um, let me go back. Anyone else see anything they're interested in? Again, just trying to incorporate, and I try to do this, get some grains in uh, for breakfast, get some egg dishes in for breakfast. Um, this one looked really good to me, this EVOO oatmeal. And it was the rolled oats, water, um, extra virgin olive oil, some salt. They actually put pepper in it too. I, hadn't, I wouldn't think about that, but that would make it a little bit more savory. But then you add the sweet as well. So a little maple syrup, blueberries, banana, and walnuts. So that would be a really easy, quick one to make as well for breakfast. And again, there's pages and pages of, you know, just terrific recipes. And again, incorporating different grains like the quinoa that can provide some high protein. Um, you can get some of the dried fruit in there as well. That um, apple peanut butter oatmeal. That sounds pretty American to me. <laughs> So just a lot of great recipes you could try. You know, so salad for breakfast, uh, everything goes. And then, um, you know, everyone's interested in de desserts. So I'll just throw in a few, let's see, let's look at desserts here. You guys get the gist here. So again, desserts aren't gonna be necessarily everyday foods. Um, you know, unless you're having fruit, nuts, you know, maybe cheese plate, something like that. But um, they use the, the avocados, you know, the cheeses and the spreads, uh, baked pears, um, baked apples. Um, this the one looked interesting too, the black olive cake. Um, this was one I showed in the picture, the chocolate mousse. I think I like things with extra virgin olive oil, but um, this one looked pretty good. Um, it was a little bit of work where you separate the eggs, um, but it had a little orange liqueur in it and then the dark chocolate and um, melting that down and then adding it and putting it into little serving bowls and letting it cool. But that one looked really delicious for probably not too much effort. Um, again, just tons of recipes. <clears throat> it looks like a great website. Yeah, yeah, it, it really is. And um, again, just for a traditional Mediterranean diet, they've, they, this, Website's been available for a long time, and they really have a lot of great information out there. Um, so yeah, you guys are, you know, I will send you the, the uh, cheat sheet, and you'll have this website, so you, in case you forget it, um, you can get out here and just kind of look for whatever you're interested in. And again, if you're not like sure Mediterranean diet is for you, I just kind of maybe start incorporating a dish a week or something like that and just try to add it to your rep repertoire. And then, you know, pretty soon you might be eating um, mostly Mediterranean type diet. Um, I know uh, some people are switching to these uh, food plans where you have the, the groceries delivered to your door and then you cook them yourself, but it's all kind of pre put together for you. There was one plan, I think it might be Blue Apron, that actually had a Mediterranean diet menu. 
and if anyone knows, you can chime in. But um, so it, it is, you know, popular. And I know, um, I, I, I know a lot of younger people that are using those plans these days and just having the food, uh, you know, pre-chopped and pre-put together kind of, and they just have to throw it together kind of in, in the end result. And they don't go out and buy all the spices and the other stuff that, um, you know, I have done and maybe people in my generation have done. But so there are those options out there too, if you want to, um, you know, try to go Mediterranean, but you don't really want to incorporate uh, bringing all the ingredients into your home, or maybe you're a single person and that might just be an easier option for you if you don't really enjoy cooking a lot too as well. Um, so do you guys have any questions for me? So I'm, I have a question. So I'm normally on a very low carb diet and this seems like it's a little carb heavy. Yes. Yeah. Um, you know, and again, most of our traditional diets are going to be a little bit more carb heavy. If you wanted to transition to this, I would just say maybe you're doing more whole, whole grains and, okay. you know, and I would say you don't have to do more than a few a week if that's, yeah. you know, what suits you better. Um, it's not, you know, a requirement of the diet. You might be focusing more on the healthy fats and um, the fruits and the vegetables, that type of thing. Um, okay, yeah, because I, I know when I try to get my fats, I'm not necessarily doing the most healthiest kind of fats. It's just, you know, whatever I can, you know, some processed yeah. cheese or something, and it might be better to do other things. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and even if you just start upgrading the cheeses that you're using, you know, um, I know I grew up on Velveeta. And yeah. You know, I didn't learn that that wasn't really a healthy cheese until, you know, I got older. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I, you know, if I buy a block of cheddar or I love buying the, um, the um, mozzarella and the little, you know, oh, yeah. pieces of mozzarella and cutting those up and throwing that on a pizza or, you know, uh, throwing on a caprese salad or something like that. So, yeah, so you might just start with some small steps, you know, like maybe you upgrade the cheeses that you're using. Maybe use a little feta cheese on your salad, that type of thing. Okay, thank you. Yes. Any other questions? If not, I'll let you guys get going. And I will, um, anyone that was pre-registered, um, I'm assuming all you guys were pre-registered, I will go ahead and send you that cheat sheet tomorrow. And I thank you for joining me and um, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks. Thank right. you. Thank you. I love this website, so I'm going to definitely check it out. <laughs> great. Good to hear. Yeah, it's a great one. Thank you. You're Thanks. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Sandy.